In this video, what we're going to do is continue talking about causation for the law of torts, focusing on this idea known as the Fairchild Rule, which represents something of an exception to this idea of material contribution in establishing causation. Now, this is one of the main issues relating to uh, causation and material contribution because it is a very limited uh, rule that is applied. It is a rule that is limited to only the issue, at least, uh, at least in terms of the facts of the case, the issue of asbestos cases. And I mean, it's, always, it's, it's, it's in all likelihood possible for there to be similar circumstances and factual circumstances that would actually merit application of the Fairchild Rule. But for the most part, we're talking about asbestos cases in this regard. So as a recap, though, the previous lesson talked about the case of Bonington Castings and Wardlaw and also the case of McGee versus the National Coal Board. And we noted that while it was the case that it was difficult or in some cases even impossible to show that the damage that was caused was caused specifically by negligent action. The courts held that no, that, that doesn't mean that there can be no claim because there could be a claim on the basis of material contribution and the defendant was therefore liable for that instead. The case of McGee was the case involving the uh, the exposure to brick dust, which led to a skin condition. The exposure to brick dust was the result, firstly, of a failure on the part of the defendant, a negligent failure on the part of the defendant to, uh, to provide adequate washing facilities, but also just the result of the day-to-day -day work of working in a brick kiln, which had not been the result of negligent action. So you sort of have exposure to brick dust, uh, caused both by negligent and non-negligent action and the defendant um, develops a skin condition which then is of course the damage that is being claimed for now given this circumstance the defendant cannot show in any way um, that but for the negligent action the skin condition would not have taken place they cannot show where the skin condition came from because it was an exposure from brick dust that was both negligent and non-negligent alike as such, we can think about this as material contribution. Now, things get a little bit more complicated when we think about asbestos cases. And the reason for this is because asbestos is firstly a toxic material that used to be used quite a lot in insulation. It is definitely no longer used in insulation. And in fact, quite a serious issue if you find asbestos in your house. Um, one of the diseases that is caused through the inhalation of asbestos is a very rare and very aggressive, aggressive sorry, form of lung cancer called mesothelioma. Um, it has actually, I believe, a two there we go, a two percent survival rate in terms of if you catch mesothelioma. The issue for this is the issue of causation. Because the development of this lung cancer is not something which is the result of a gradual accumulation or inhalation of, the, of asbestos fibres. It's not like the case of Bonington castings, for example, where there was a direct correlation between the amount of dust that was inhaled and the severity of the lung condition that was suffered. When we talk about mesothelioma and asbestos cases, in fact, one fibre could cause mesothelioma. Equally, the inhalation of quite a lot of asbestos could also cause mesothelioma. Because it is a form of cancer, it obviously re results in the uh, mutation of a cell within the lung, which then, of course, develops into a cancer. So it's not as simple and clear-cut as more asbestos equals higher, um, uh, more, more, <laughs> more cancer, essentially, uh, or lower survival rate. In fact, one asbestos fiber could cause mesothelioma, and it could also cause mesothelioma either develop, cause it to develop quite early on, or it could develop years and years and years and years after um, the inhalation of uh, mesothelioma. In fact, as a, as a sort of a personal anecdote, my granddad died of mesothelioma um, from working, we believe, at, from in a printer's. And this was 30, 40 years maybe after he had left that job and so uh, and then developed it uh, uh, at a later age in his 70s. So this is a particularly nasty and aggressive form of cancer that isn't as clear cut when it comes to material contribution as the previous cases stated. And so we have the case of Fairchild, Fairchild versus Glenhaven Funeral Services. 
this case, the claimants had been negligently exposed to asbestos fibers. Remember, there still has to be a negligent exposure. This has to be some kind of negligence here. This was done over the course of numerous different employments. And as a result, they developed this rare form of lung cancer. The main issue is that it was not known to the extent to which a single fiber of asbestos could cause mesothelioma or the extent of accumulation into the cause. And it seemed likely impossible that a single fiber could develop the disease just as much as the slow accumulation of the fibers could leave a person without the disease. So you could go through and uh, inhale quite a lot of asbestos and you might be absolutely fine, but you could equally inhale one fiber and get mesothelioma. It is uh, quite random at the, at the, in this regard. So this is not the same, as you can imagine, to the Bonington castings or the McGee case, where there is a, a, a slow gradual development of the, uh, of the illness as a result of a slow accumulation of the, uh, of the dust particles. The Court of Appeal would reject the claims on the basis of the ordinary approaches to causation. But what the House of Lords did was overturn this and create a novel ruling, a novel exception to some of the basic causation principles because of the nature of this illness. They rejected, firstly, the ordinary but for test on the basis that for policy considerations, the defendants ought to be liable on the basis that they had created a material increase of risk to the various claimants, rather than trying to show but for the fibres in question, um, there would not have been mesothelioma. Because that is uh, absolutely uh, a, a, an impossible feat to try and show. If we were to apply the but-for test, how could you even possibly know which asbestos fiber A was the cause of the, uh, of, of the illness and where that asbestos fiber came from? Did it come from employment A? Did it come from employment B or, or employment C? Uh, again, all of which is impossible to know. So a book for a applica the application of the book for test would be impossible here. And so the result of this was on the basis of a material increase of risk to the various claimants, there was joint liability on the basis of this. Since Fairchild, there have been other cases, one which sought the uh, portion of to damages uh, to various employees. This is the case of Barker and Corpus UK. However, this was overturned by the statute in the passage of the Compensation Act of that same year.